Hi everybody, um, my name is Dr. Mary Claire Haver. I am a board certified obstetrician gynecologist. I am also certified in culinary medicine. I did about 18 months of postgraduate uh, tr um, studies in medical nutrition and I have married my passions of women's health and a menopause and nutrition into my company called The Galveston Diet. You can learn more about it at my link in bio, but tonight I'm coming on this evening to talk to you guys about menopause and answer your menopause questions. So I've got a few lined up here from before, but if you have any questions, you are more than welcome to drop them in the comments below and I will try to get to them. So if you're just joining me, do me a quick favor and double tap the screen, double tap my face like 10 times, beat it up as many times as you want what this does is gives me likes which you'll see on the right hand side of the screen and it will drive the algorithm to keep me relevant on this platform and have them show this video to more people so um, if you tap a whole bunch it will make this giant heart that'll like shine down a rainbow of hearts uh just like that on the screen so um okay let's see uh, I'm gonna, so drop your questions in the comments below. Thank you for all the likes. And if you don't follow me, I invite you to do that. If you're just joining because the algorithm is starting to take off now. Again, I'm Dr. Mary Claire Haver. I am a board certified ob -GYN. I'm also a menopause specialist. Um, I'm a 54 year old menopausal woman and I also have an additional postgraduate um, 18 months in medical nutrition. So I talk a lot about nutrition. You know, when I, when I counsel my patients for menopause and I, they basically walk out with a toolbox. I'm not just throwing hormone replacement therapy at them. We're having a complete discussion about nutrition, exercise, other pharmaceuticals, hormones, supplements, just to try to help them reach their goals. Um, and okay, hello, hello. Thank you for all the hellos and the hearts and the likes and the shares. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, so can you list some of the symptoms of perimenopause? Okay, so I'm gonna name a bunch, but I want you guys to give me what symptoms are you having in perimenopause? Let me see it. Let me see it in the comments below. What are the symptoms you are having in perimenopause? So menstrual irregularities, hot flashes, night sweats, new onset of belly fat, gaining weight in places you never have before, especially your gut, um, sleep disturbances, oh my God, muscle pain, joint pain, mental health changes, both anxiety, depression, ADHD, and brain fog, dry skin, dry eyes, dry mouth, itchy skin, hair loss, new hair growth in places you don't want it, hair loss in places you do, um, unloved feelings, sexual function changes, dry vagina, painful sex, incontinence, gut changes, recurrent UTIs, cholesterol changes, headaches, and more, and more. Um, also, a dentist pointed out to me dental changes. The dry mouth is coming with massive changes in your mouth. And so, um, yes, ears, dry ears, itchy ears, huge common symptom we see in perimenopause. Mood so up and down, hair into your chin. I'm reading your stuff. Itchy ears, itchy ears. So I talked to my bestie who's a dermatologist and I said, look, all these menopausal women are coming in with itchy ears. What's the deal and what can they do about it? And she said, okay, it's a dry skin. So the production of sebum, which is like lubricant, like oil in your skin drops in menopause because our androgen levels can drop. And she said, what you need to do is, you know, keep the area moisturized like an emollient or, or cover it with a barrier to hold in the moisture like like um, um, aquaphor or something. So like on a Q-tip, you can try aquaphor or some kind of emollient, you know? So anyway, that was sort of wanting to divorce your husband. I've, that is not the first time I've heard that. Lots of things are going on in our lives. Like here's the most interesting thing. I saw another gynecologist, uh, my phrenology here, and she talks a lot about the mental, not mental health, Hang on, it's the sunset is so beautiful. And so I'm trying to pull up the shades. Um, she talks about our give a shit filter, our like, our, all of our filters. Like it's a survival instinct for us to hold in our feelings so that we can find a mate. We don't really say what we want to say. We don't really, you know, do the things we really want to do because we're trying to like marry ourselves off and stay safe and protected and not have anyone try to kill us. And so then all of a sudden we get to this age and we're secure. The kids are out of the house for some of us, not all. And, you know, we're in kind of a place and all of a sudden she thinks it's biological. Our filters, our give a shit, our like, I'm just going to say whatever the hell I want 
is like kicked in in full gear. Is anybody else, you have no tolerance for people's stuff. I have put down boundaries that you guys would not believe. I have basically cut off contact with certain family members and I'm like, as painful as that is for me to do, my mental health and the relationship I want with my own children has got to come first, has got to come first. So is anybody else going through that? Like, I am just telling it like it is. I'm telling my husband what I want. I'm not sugarcoating it. I mean, I'm trying to be reasonable. But, you know, I, I am just like, F all y'all. I'm going to take care of me and mine. And I'm not, I, you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done with the toxic. I'm done with negativity. I left a toxic job. I walked out of a job. I looked a place I had been for 20 something years, a place where I considered these people, my medical family, but it just got so bad that when they just, the straw broke, the last straw came down. I just like out of nowhere said, I am worth more than this and you're losing me. I'm out. I'm, this is a hell no. I'm not doing what you're asking me to do. And I'm highly employable. I will go and find another job. I put me first. I put me first. Is anybody else doing that? It feels freaking awesome. Yeah, I see the hands. I see the hands. So if you're just joining me, uh, double tap, double tap, double tap. Okay, and I just posted a TikTok. You can go back and watch it. It's an audio and you should use it. Ladies, if you're 50 and older, you've got to watch this TikTok and you've got to use the video, the audio for yourself because it's a woman saying, I didn't die at 50. What am I doing with the next 40 years of my life? Like, like we're not giving up just because we're 50 doesn't mean we don't get to have a life and, and a wonderful life. And so I was like, I made a TikTok and like listed all the things I've done after 50, starting a company, writing a book, starting a second book. I'm writing a menopause book specifically for menopause. Um, quit my job and open a clinic specific for, I opened my dream clinic for menopause. Becoming a nurse. Okay, I see. You became a nurse at 50. I see so many people going back to university or training or quitting horrible jobs and finding the next phase of their life. Um, Okay, I will. So the first book I've written, which will be released January 10th, is The Galveston Diet. It's the nutrition program. But, you know, we actually wrote that book two years ago, and it just takes so long to get it published and everything. I, it, you know, in the last two years, I basically have just did a deep dive into menopause with nutrition, but everything else. And I just feel like, uh, and so many of you have asked for me to write a, like a menopause Bible. You know, so here's, here's my thought. I'm going to go through, you know, my menopause story and all that. But like, basically you go organ system by organ system. Here's what menopause does to the brain. Here are the symptoms that you might have. Here are what hormone therapy may or may not do for you. Here is what other pharmaceuticals may or may not do for you. Here are what supplements might be able to do for you. Here are the exercise recommendations for this. So you can basically go by symptom and find out, is HRT going to help me with this? what, you know, what kind, and then a whole chapter on HRT, the kinds, the, you know, options, the cost, I'm gonna have charts, it's gonna be fucking awesome. So it'll be like what to expect, what you're expecting, but it's menopause. I can't call it that, because you know, they, that book is the number one selling book in self-help, like in the top 10 every single day since it got published. It's unbelievable, everybody buys that book. Okay, so, but that's, I'm literally, my agent and I are working on the proposal to take back to the publisher. We are, but I mean, once we get it going, it's gonna go, I want it out in a year. So, um, but it's a ton of research for me, but I don't mind, I love it. I read research articles, like peer reviewed journal articles and PubMed all the time, every day. Okay, so the book I think is gonna be called The Pause Life. I want a positive name. Um, the pause life, what every woman needs to know about menopause. And basically you just go through and you're like, do I need HRT? What do I take for this? What is it, you know, oh, I have muscle and joint pain. I need to learn about this. How, why is this happening? What is the mechanism? Okay, is HRT going to help? What other medications can I take? What are exercise recommendations? What are nutrition recommendations? All evidence-based, okay? Pulling it all together. So, um, Anyway, okay, so drop your questions in the comments. Everybody, take a second. There are 670 of you watching. Hi. Um, and double tap my face like 10 times, as many times as you can stand. And what that does is give me likes. It drives the algorithm. And if you don't follow me, I completely would love for you to follow me. Um, we are almost at 1.9 million. Like, we are sliding into 2 million. It's crazy to me that I get stopped in the airport because people saw me on TikTok. Um, so is spotting during menopause normal? Okay, if you are fully menopausal 
and not on hormone replacement therapy. Okay, if you've gone a year without a period and you're over the age of 45, you're fully menopausal, okay? Or a doctor has done the blood work and diagnosed you. And, okay, I'm gonna need to hit the lights real quick. Let's go over here. And, uh, hang on. And you have new onset spotting. That is not okay. Any spotting after menopause is literally going to be any postmenopausal bleeding is cancer until proven otherwise. I'm not saying you have cancer, but we must, the only way to know that this is not cancer is to do a biopsy. So y'all know how I feel about endometrial biopsies. Call your doctor ahead of time. I'm having postmenopausal bleeding. What do you offer for pain control for my biopsy? I know I need one. Okay. You'll have an ultra, you'll have a biopsy plus or minus ultrasound, and you deserve the option to choose for adequate pain control during your endometrial biopsy. Because let me tell you, they can hurt like a mofo, and we cannot predict who's going to hurt and who's not going to hurt. So there are pain control options that should be available to you outside of ibuprofen and Tylenol, okay? Some of you may feel like the biopsy was no big deal, but a lot of you, a very significant percent of you will have horrific cramping and pain and, and almost want to pass out or throw up or something. And we can help by offering you trauma-informed care and multimodal pain control options, okay? So make sure you ask. And if they're like, you don't need anything for pain, say, no, 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 I do. I need the option. And you can just keep shopping until you find a gynecologist who is at least going to give you the option. Okay. Um, so, okay. Um, I am going to, all right, more questions, more questions, more questions. Let's see. So everybody, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're up to 840 of you watching. So if you don't follow me, please do. I'm Dr. Mary Claire Haver, board certified ob -GYN. I do repeat who I am because so many of you come in and out. Thank you underscore for the rose. I really, really, really appreciate it. All this helps drive the algorithm and keep me relevant on this platform. Can you mention the article you referenced about HRT before 60 being beneficial for cardiac health. Absolutely I can, because I always have it open on my computer. It's that important to me, 100% of the time. So I'm gonna flip this around and pray like hell that y'all can see it, okay? I'm gonna have to come around and come around so I can see what you can see. All right, so it's backwards. So here's what I recommend. Screenshot this, it's in Circulation Magazine. Screenshot it. And then you flip it on your camera. You just do a right left flip on the camera and then you can Google that title and it will come up, okay? It will come up, everybody screenshot it. This is the article that you will take to your ob office to fight for hormone replacement therapy or at least have the conversation. When they say, no, 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 it's gonna give you heart disease. No, it won't. No, 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 you must come off at 60. No, you don't have to. No, 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 it's gonna give you breast cancer. No, it won't, okay? That's it. That is the article. Thank you for asking. Okay, the name of it is, and somebody type it out in the comments, Menopause Transition and Cardiovascular Disease Risk, Implications for Timing of Early Prevention, a Scientific Statement from the American Heart Association, AHA. Big ass deal. Okay. Oh, all right. So, all things Carolyn wants to know, what's your recommendation for 10-year post menopausal hormone balancing non-replacement. I don't know what you're talking about, sweetheart. Wait. So I don't use the term balance your hormones. That is a marketing term, not a medical term. I'm talking about hormone therapy. We're not going to try to balance anything. Okay. Now some hormone therapy is trial and error. There's different types, options, doses, not, it's not a one size fits all that everybody's going to get the same thing. Okay. Um, thank you for the likes, guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I really, really, really appreciate it. We're up to 20,000 likes. Keep them coming, keep them coming. Your doctor wants you to do a cortisol test and it's a spit test. Do not do any saliva tests. No, no, no. You need to see a board certified endocrinologist to do, and they're only checking for severe cortisol issues, okay? These saliva tests have never, never, never been proven to be accurate. They're not approved by any insurance. Save your money, this is a scam. It's a gimmick, okay? And it's they are just there to sell you ridiculousness. If you think that you have great Cushing's disease or Addison's disease and you need a test that is a blood test, it's very, very, it, you have to do it certain times. That is a blood test. It's very, very, it, you have to do it certain times. It, you have to have preload with medication. Do not do these saliva tests or the Dutch test. Do not do these tests. These are scams. They are not correlated with anything important. 
and these are ways for uh, these labs to make a lot of money off of you with unnecessary testing. Okay. So what are we saying stop about? Okay, I don't care. Thank you for saying you feel cortisol dump. Um, what are your thoughts on pellets, estrogen, testosterone with an I I don't know what an ATM gene variant is. I'm sorry. I'm not. Pellets are not my first choice. They're not my fifth choice. Pellets are absolutely the last choice for me, for a patient, for hormone therapy. You can get safe, efficacious, body identical, though that's a marketing term, not a medical term, for $20 a month from Walgreens, okay? You do not have to pay these exorbitant prices to get safe, efficacious hormone replacement therapy. You don't. And if your doctor is not giving you all the options. Now, if you decide, hey, I want the most expensive option. I like the convenience of having a pellet stuck in my ass for three months. You know, that's what I want. That's what I want. That's what I want. Then go for it. It's your money. You get to spend your money on what you want, but you don't have to. You can get just as good, efficacious, safe, therapeutic hormone therapy from Walgreens for $20. You don't have to pay for these pellets if you don't want to, okay? Absolutely. freaking lutely um, all right, you, can, you, you were told you can't do HRT because breast cancer on both parental sides. So unless we know that you have estrogen receptive positive breast cancer, you, not your mom, not your sister, that does not rule you out as a candidate. So here's the truth. Women who were on estrogen only, so if you've had a hysterectomy or you have a Mirena IUD, and you want hormone replacement therapy, and you don't have to take oral progesterone, then your risk of breast cancer is not any higher than placebo. Estrogen does not cause breast cancer. Estrogen does not cause breast cancer. Estrogen feeds an existing breast cancer, which is why they take you off and give you an anti-estrogen to keep it from growing back, but it does not cause breast cancer. The estrogen and progesterone arm were the only women who had a slightly increased risk of breast cancer, and that was for over eight years of therapy, okay? And women who started later in life. So the risk of taking estrogen and progesterone combination and developing breast cancer is the same as the risk of being obese or having wine every night. A glass of wine a night gives you the same risk of breast cancer or the same risk as being obese as taking hormone replacement therapy. Let me put it in the form of estrogen and progesterone. That is it. It is a slight increased risk. Slight. Slight. Okay? Slight. That is up to you. Here's what we know about hormone replacement therapy, starting early and continuing for at least 10 years. Your risk of all-cause mortality is lower, meaning you're more likely to be alive at the end of 10 years than if you didn't take it. Your risk of cardiovascular disease and death from cardiovascular disease is less if you were on hormone replacement therapy, starting early, continuing long, than you weren't. Your all-cause mortality from any cancer, your overall risk of cancer, of all cancers, is less if you're on hormone therapy. This is the truth. I don't make this up. I make zero money talking to you guys, okay? This is the latest data. This shocked me. I did not learn this in training. And the docs who've been out that are my age who are not keeping up with the latest menopause literature, who are saying they're menopause care but not actually caring for menopause women, telling them sucks to be you. See ya. Um, yeah, this is just part of aging. You're just getting old. No, okay, no. All right, um, I'm in menopause. Will estrogen help me lose weight? Okay, so estrogen will not help you lose weight. Okay, but here's what it will do. Hang on, my lips are dry. Estrogen, women who are on estrogen versus those who aren't have less accumulation of visceral fat, okay? Their bellies don't get bigger, as big as the ones who are not on HRT. So how many of you are having an accelerated deposit of abdominal fat that you did not have before? And it started somewhere in perimenopause. That is part of an estrogen decline associated with perimenopause and menopause. This is a huge part of my nutrition program, the Galveston Diet. We talk a lot about this. And there are specific nutritional recommendations that I give my patients, that I give my followers, you know, that I give our, my students that have been shown in menopausal women to decrease the amount of visceral fat. You know, visceral fat is very different than subcutaneous fat. Subcutaneous fat is the fat you've had your whole entire life. It gives us curves, cellulite, it's under the skin. 
It's not metabolically dangerous, okay, unless you have a whole lot of it. It can put wear and tear on your joints because you're heavier and you're moving stuff around, but it is just a storage facility, okay? Visceral fat is the intra-abdominal fat that wraps around your organs. It builds out the omentum, it wraps around your gut, it goes around the uterus, it goes around the stomach, the liver, the fatty liver, all that, okay? Pericardial fat, that's all or organ fat, visceral fat. That fat is different. This fat is its own metabolic organ. It is not driven by the same mechanisms as subcutaneous fat. It does not respond well to calories in, calories out, okay? It will, but only if you're extreme. And, and when you're extreme, you're losing muscle mass. You don't want to do that, okay? It responds to fiber, enough fiber in your diet. It responds to probiotics. It responds to curcumin. It is or tumor, turmeric. It responds to exercise, okay? So visceral fat is different. Estrogen replacement therapy, estrogen will decrease the accumulation of visceral fat and lower the health risk. So the health risks associated with visceral fat accumulation are hypertension, diabetes, stroke, cancer, autoimmune disease, etc. You lower that. So estrogen helps with all of that, which is why there are health benefits outside of hot flashes that are very well studied and it's the currently American College of Asia and North American Menopause Society are not recommending this for the prevention of cardiovascular disease, but it's heading that way because the American Heart Association is, okay? So that is the article you need to print out and bring to your doctor's office. Now, I have lots of this information on my blog. I have blog after blog after blog about how to talk to your doctor about HRT. Here's information for you. Here's resources for you. Here's a list of doctors who are menopause friendly. All of that on our website, okay? Okay. Um, all right, I'm reading the questions. Hang on. So everybody take a second. Give me as many taps as you can stand. Double tap my face fast, 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 fast. This gives likes. If you don't follow me, I invite you to follow me. I would love to learn uh, more about you um, and have you learn about menopause and healthcare and nutrition. Okay. Oh, brought the reference material to your doctor and guess who finally has transdermal HRT? Boom. I love it. She brought in the goods, handed the article. And guess what she got? She got her HRT. Good for you. You shouldn't say you can get it at Walgreens. You can pick up a script. Absolutely, that I stand corrected. That is absolutely the right way to say it. You can have it filled at a Walgreens pharmacy with a prescription from your healthcare provider. Absolutely, I will make an effort to not say it that way anymore. Um, Let's see, not having menopausal symptoms, but you can't seem to lose the gut fat, need something. Okay, so again, when I talk about menopause care to my patients, now again, I, don't, I, I have an hour scheduled with a new patient, okay? I have an hour for us to sit down and discuss their lives, their history, their everything. We talk about their nutrition, their exercise habits, everything. Now, I have a degree in nutrition, so I can do that. Most doctors don't have my training, okay? They cannot... That is not anything in their wheelhouse, okay? Um, and don't take nutritional advice from a doctor unless they have some kind of a degree in nutrition because they don't know because they didn't teach us that in school, I promise. I promise, I promise, a thousand times, I promise. Okay, so, oh, and thank you for the likes and the follows and the shares. You can share the little share button right here. And if you don't follow me, follow me. Okay, so, um, I lost my train of thought. Uh, what were we talking about? Somebody say it in the comments. Um, all right. Oh, menopause toolkit. So I look at menopause care as a toolbox. So when I talk to my patients, remember, they're mostly perimenopausal and menopausal. They're in their 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s. I don't have 20-year-olds coming to see me, okay? Late 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s. And we talk about their goals, okay? Occasionally, they come in just for weight loss, but that is not the majority of my patients. They're like, look, I know I need to lose some weight, but I'm scared. I see what my mom's going through, my aunts are going through, and I don't want that. I want better health. I don't want my children worried about my health or my mental health. I don't want or my physical health. I don't want to not be able to play with grandbabies. I want to climb a mountain at 80. I want to, you know, whatever their goals are. But a lot of you come to me or talk to me offline or in my DMs about how scared you are about your family history and what can I do to change this. So it is not a magic bullet. I don't have here, take the supplement and everything's going to be okay. You got to work. It, it's, it's a package, okay? And you have to completely rethink nutrition and how you move your body if you want to be as healthy as you can as you get older, okay? It's, it's, it's a mind. All the shit you used to get away with when you were younger that seemed healthy and you got away with it. This, our bodies are changing. Our mental health, everything is changing, okay? So 
We talk about nutrition is the backbone of my conversation with the patients. I go through what their goals are, what their needs, what their risks are, and specific nutritional recommendations like women who have a diet rich in green leafy greens have a lower risk of Alzheimer's disease. I mean, we talk about, we get down to the nitty gritty. Okay, that's what my training did for me. And I make specific supplement recommendations. Look, if you can't get fish, if you're allergic, whatever, you really should take an omega-3 supplement because with your, dep- I'm just giving you an example, because with your depression, we know that from these studies in menopausal and perimenopausal depression, omega-3 fatty acids can be very, very helpful. With your adult onset ADHD, Omega-3 fatty acids can be very helpful. I mean, I go through organ system by organ system and we make recommendations, both nutrition, supplements, whatever. We also talk about pharmacology. We talk about hormone replacement therapy. If there's a candidate, we go through the risk factors. We go through the benefits. You know, we talk about where in their life this could help. Of course, hot flashes, night sweats, urogenital symptoms, um, brain fog, you know, visceral fat deposition, muscle aches, pains, you know, we go through all that, but also longevity. Women who are in HRT live longer, healthier, and have a better quality of life. They're less likely to die from horrible, scary diseases than women who don't take it, okay? So even if they don't have a symptom in the world, not a symptom. So um, hang on. I need some water. Let's get some water. I'm talking so much. So, and we talk about exercise. You know, I met, I'm lucky enough in my clinic to be able to measure their muscle mass and see so much. So... And we talk about exercise. You know, I met, I'm lucky enough in my clinic to be able to measure their muscle mass and see where guys put having low muscle mass and low bone density puts you at risk for, for hip fracture and vertebral fracture. And let me tell you, you fall and break your hip, 50% chance of death. The last time I looked, I need to look again. Death in five years, dead, dead, dead. <laughs> okay. You don't want to fall and break your hip. And the shit we're doing right now, ladies, if most of you are watching me or my age, is going to define whether or not we fall and we break. This is what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about skinny. Okay, I just got back from LA. And if anybody's from Los Angeles, I apologize for this in advance, but what the ever living fuck, okay? I've never seen a emaciated, thin people in my life. For Beverly Hills. I'm walking, 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 walking. I had all this downtime. So I'm hiking through the hills. I'm going through neighborhoods. I'm seeing all these sweet people out there walking their dogs and doing all this fun stuff. And I'm like, oh, this is cute. You know, but I'm like shocked because it's not just the occasional like ultra thin person. That's just genetic, whatever. Every single woman, it's like their bones. I see their butt bones in their yoga pants. I see their sacrum. I can see the sacrum. They have zero ass, no muscle, and it's stuff just hanging down there. Their legs are so skinny. Now, I have skinny arms and legs, okay? And I'm always fighting to get on more muscle. And these women were like 60 and 70, okay? These are like beautiful skin. They look great. Their hair's all stylish. They're all cute with their dogs and their fancy outfits. But I'm like, lady, lady, you're going to fall and break. You're going to break. You look so unhealthy to me. It was so scary. And then I'm, you know, one or two, okay, that's genetic or she's, she's had cancer or something, but it was like all over. I was like, please, God, let me just show, show me a seven, six year old woman with some meat on her bones, please, please. So, you know, and so what I hear is a lot of those ladies, a lot of people in LA and whatever are getting on these shots to lose weight that are, they are losing weight on the shot. Okay, fine. But it, you know, it's like dying to be thin. Like the rich just want to get skinny and y'all don't want that. I'm telling you, you don't want that. If you are, you know, so when my patients come to me and they're just obsessed with their weight and the scale, I really have a heart to heart with them. And we talk about health and we talk about wellness and we talk about lifting things and being able to brush your hair in 15 years and getting off the toilet without assistance. And you know, what is that going to take? And so, um, yes, there are shots to lose weight guys. I'm, I'm, there, it's type de, medications that were developed for type two diabetes that um, are. I don't know what the mechanism of action is. Um, this is out of my wheelhouse. I do not prescribe them, but they are all the rage. Ozempic, Monju, Monjuno, um, whatever. And they're like, oh, any weight loss that you have, you, it should come with a habit change. Okay, it should come with you've changed your habits, habits that you can sustain for the rest of your life. And what I worry about is, is these shots are a quick fix and they're, they're not long-term data yet. And they may be more harmful than good. You may have short-term weight loss. Um, not the same as metformin, not the same, uh, maybe in a similar class cause they do work at the liver. But, um, so, you know, I'm speaking out of turn. Look, I don't, I 
I'm not an obesity specialist. A lot of these women who came to me on the back end to talk about these shots were morbidly obese, and this was an alternative to gastric bypass surgery, and they, they felt like this was a better option for them. I'm like, hey, go for it, you know, because the, the people who are, you know, extremely obese are at high risk of dying. And so I get doing whatever you can to, to decrease that risk of imminent. The, the people who are, you know, extremely obese are at high risk of dying. And so I get doing whatever you can to, to decrease that risk of imminent dying. I get that they want to be there for their kids they want to be whatever but i mean a woman who just wants you know who feels who feels like she's 10 pounds 15 pounds 20 pounds overweight i would you know i i caution again i i don't know i you know so um anyway all right hello 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 so if you're just joining me i'm dr mary claire haver um double tap the screen as many times as you can we're up to sixty-two thousand likes thank you so much please follow me if you don't follow me so what are the tests done to prescribe hrt that is a great question so if you are perimenopausal meaning you're still having period it can be irregular but you're still like can expect a period there is no blood test that will diagnose perimenopause, okay? The hormone levels fluctuate so wildly that um, you, they, they fluctuate so wildly that you um, don't have, and a one-time blood test is rarely diagnostic for perimenopause. Perimenopause is a diagnosis of exclusion. Thank you for the likes. Holy cow, we're at 66,000. Um, diagnosis of exclusion, full. So these people who are having you spit in things or, or pee on things, do all this blood work, don't, don't, it's not necessary. You rule out hypothyroidism, you rule out autoimmune disease, you listen to your patient, you look at her constellation of symptoms, you make the diagnosis from there. Yes, you can start hormone therapy in perimenopause. I do it every single day in my clinic, okay? It is okay for you to transition a woman through her perimenopause on hormones into full menopause. It made some dose, adjust, dose adjusting and changes. Um, Let's see. Uh, too many people here. You need help in this small town. Recently did a blood shot test and had no menopausal. Um, so welcome to menopause. Um, now, if you are fully menopausal, we have a great blood test to confirm that, especially if you don't have a uterus. Now, if you've gone one year without a period and you're over the age of 45 and you were having periods before, that's menopause. We don't need a blood test to confirm it. We can go ahead and start therapy. So it doesn't have to be all multiple rounds of blood work. And we don't have a therapeutic window. We don't check a blood level and go, oh, we need to get you to 100. I'm just making up a number. And therefore, you're therapeutic. You don't need that, okay? We treat based on symptoms. We know that women took this dose and they had a longer life. They had a better quality of life. They had stronger bones. They had lower risk of cardiovascular disease. They had lower risk of cancer. So that's the kind of dose we sit around. Now, now if you're still having hot flashes or symptoms, you know, with that dose, we can go up a little bit and we can titrate for what you need. Okay. Um, let's see. I'm reading the questions, guys. Hang on. You can't, so you can't cite HRT if you still have periods. Not true. If you're having periods, you absolutely can utilize hormone therapy to, actually women who were treated with estrogen and progesterone through perimenopause, so they, so they did a study where they looked at euthymic women, women who had euthymia, meaning no depression, no anxiety, no mental health issues. They were perfectly fine. Their scores were great, okay? And they put half of the group on hormone therapy through perimenopause and the other half, none. And then they measured them after a certain amount of time. And the chances of developing new onset depression were lower, lower in women who were on hormone therapy versus those who weren't. So it seems like hormone therapy and perimenopause is preventative for the new development of depression. Okay. Um, how heavy is too heavy for bleeding? If it's heavy to you, that's too heavy. I mean, we don't walk around with measuring cups. We do have ways to quantify blood loss, but nobody uses them. Basically, oh, you're soaking a pad an hour. What is that? What, we have multiple different size pads. If it's a problem for you, if you can't get through a normal day with on your period with something that, you know, where it, if it's disrupting your life, if you can't get through a meeting or whatever with normal menstrual products you buy at Walgreens or, you know, or at Walmart or whatever with normal pads and tampons, that's a problem. That's too much bleeding. You should be able to live your life, live a normal, healthy, happy life, okay? Wearing diapers, that's too fucking much. Go see a gynecologist who gives a shit about this stuff and go get tested and figure out what's going on and go get treated. You don't have to bleed like this. 
If you're wearing a diaper, call today and go and get, that is not okay, all right? Um, eight, hormone replacement therapy does not make you lose weight. That is not a weight loss program, okay? Now, it can keep you from gaining weight in certain areas of your body, but it is not, hormone replacement therapy should never be considered a weight loss agent, ever, ever, ever. Um, okay, uh, suffering from vulvar atrophy for years, best treatment options, topical estrogen. Topical estrogen is your best, okay? Topical vaginal estrogen, and vaginal estrogen has zero risks. Zero risks. Um, been bleeding for seven weeks straight, you're 53. Go see your gynecologist, not okay. You need evaluation immediately. Um, you have two questions. You had a full hysterectomy in March, so I'm assuming you had your ovaries removed. How long do you stay on hormones? You can stay on them forever if your risks don't increase. Um, I'm not coming off unless I have a contraindication, and I don't, so. Um, you're 50 and noticing so many changes. I hear you, I hear you, I hear you. Thank you for the follows, guys. Thank you if you don't follow me. I love talking about all things menopause. Um, so how, so you, um, let's see, I'm reading. What about surgical menopause is worse? Surgical menopause is the worst thing. I recently did a TikTok. There was a study about surgical menopause and the risks of massive disease states for women who had their ovaries surgically removed up to age 65. That's what freaked me out, okay? New study came out looking at women who had their ovaries removed versus those who kept them like in their 40s and 50s, and you would not believe the increasing health risk for women who had their ovaries surgically removed. Now, HRT can attenuate some of those risks, but not all of them. And there is a risk up to age 65. Like I was trained and believed, well, once you're menopausal, just take them out. They could get cancer. And I don't know why, but there is some kind of a benefit to keeping them. So isn't that crazy? How do you know if you need progesterone if you have a uterus? Okay, when we talk about hormone therapy, it's estrogen. Estrogen is what we're giving you, okay? You only need hormone replacement therapy. You only need progesterone added to that as to protect the lining of the uterus. We don't use progesterone routinely therapeutically in postmenopause. We can use it in perimenopause, but not postmenopause unless you still have a uterus. Now, if you have a moraine IUD or you've had a hysterectomy, then you don't need it. But even with an ablation, you need progesterone or you risk the um, development of endometrial hyperplasia or cancer. Um, oh, thank you for the rose. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, I'm reading, reading, reading. Um, are HRTs the same strength or different for everyone? There's multiple strengths. So transdermal has about five or six different strengths. Oral has three strengths, and you can break them in half and do different stuff with them of, of estradiol. So we, um, there's multiple ways. And then there's creams and gels. You can adjust those doses as well. My favorite form of hormone therapy is a vaginal ring. You just throw it up there and it releases, but it can be really expensive and very few people can, insurances cover them. Mm. Let's see. Um, okay. So how many of you are menopausal? Let me see in the comments real quick. And then everybody take a second and double tap the screen. Tap my face like this, tap, 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 tap. That gives me a bunch of likes. That drives the algorithm and keeps me relevant on this platform. Um, is 62 safe to start HRT? That's an intense discussion with your gynecologist, uh, especially if you were on it for some time. Like if you've never ever been on HRT, it depends how old you are when you went through hormone replacement therapy. It depends what your risk factors are. Certainly if you have active liver disease or active heart disease, that's a no. So, um, and you're gonna, you really need someone who specializes in menopause because the average bear will not, with their training and what's taught right now, they're not gonna offer you HRT. They're gonna say you're too old. Um, so, okay, so what, is it true that HRT works better than statins? So here's what the data, if I read it correctly, said. That women on hormone replacement therapy had a lower incidence of death from cardiovascular disease than women on statins. That it seemed like for women specifically, remember most of these studies on all these cardiovascular medicines, almost all of them were done only on men. 
Women until 1993 were excluded from studies because their hormone fluctuations felt like, or they could get pregnant and it would mess up the study, okay, or it hurt the baby. So, so a lot of the shit that we're recommended to take, statins included, all the studies were done on men, specifically white men. So we have very few studies on women, almost no studies for these kind of medicines on women of color. So how can I look a Hispanic woman in the face and tell her to get on a statin that is going to like do wonders for her health? Okay. Here's what we know. Statins are not as effective as HRT for decreasing your risk of death from cardiovascular disease. How about that? <laughs> Ladies, is your cardiologist talking about that? Because that came out in that same study I talked about earlier from the American Heart Association, okay? They didn't study this stuff in, in women. So when my patients come in with high cholesterol, I'm like, and their doctors are pressuring them to get on a statin, I'm like, tell him to give me a year. Will he give me a year? Especially if their cholesterol is like 240, 250, you know? Let's work on this nutritionally. Let's put some good, sound nutritional principles that have been proven to bring cholesterol levels down and raise your HDL and lower your LDL. And let's try that. And it almost always works. Now, certainly there are genetic components to this that a woman is just screwed no matter what, okay? But I, okay, alternatives to HRT, there are none. There is nothing in the world that is going to work as effectively as hormone replacement therapy. Now, there are things that can control your symptoms. If you have hot flashes and you can't take estrogen because of a contraindication, then we have ways to control your hot flashes. But, you know, nothing in the world works better than estrogen and giving you back what your body used to make. Um, okay. You're 52, you're so hot all the time, no ovaries, you're having hot flashes. Estrogen replacement therapy could be wonderful for you. Um, you've had an IUD for two years and you've experienced heavy bleeding, sign of a miscarriage. You need to see a doctor immediately, immediately tomorrow, or take a pregnancy test ASAP. The only way to know if you've had a miscarriage, the only way is to take a pregnancy test and you can go right now to your local pharmacy and pick one up or the grocery store, okay? Um, chemotherapy is causing menopause is the same risk as surgical menopause and it's a much higher risk than going through menopause naturally, okay? Um... Does PCOS affect HRT therapy? No, thank God, no. It's the only good thing about having PCOS. You can take HRT and it will not affect your PCOS at all. Um, do not, guys, don't send me your labs. I can't be your doctor. I cannot give you specific medical advice. Don't put your labs on here. Um, you had an ablation seven years ago. How do you measure your menopause stage? So I start talking to the patient about her symptoms. I start talking about, you know, muscle pain, joint pain, sleeplessness. I have a whole questionnaire they fill out. If they start checking off those boxes, I do a blood test immediately. So if I don't have a uterus and bleeding every month to help me gauge kind of where they are, I will send the blood test to see if they're postmenopausal. Okay. Their symptoms tell me if they're perimenopausal. The blood work will tell me if they're fully menopausal. Um... Your doctor said your brain needs estrogen. Yeah, it does. Hell yeah. The supplement DIM, of course I'm familiar with it. And it is overblown, okay? Let me tell you about DIM. DIM is overblown, oversold, and completely misinterpreted. DIM is methane. okay? 3,3,3,3-diendolomethane. Three, 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 it is the active ingredient in cruciferous vegetables, like Brussels sprouts and broccoli and cauliflower and things that crunch that are green. Okay, gray and white. So um, it is a chemical, a, phyto, a phytochemical in these veggies. And what, here's what the first thing was. Women who have diets naturally rich in crunchy cruciferous vegetables have less breast cancer. Okay. So then the nutritionists were like, why? Why is a diet rich in this? What is in this diet? What is in this food? What, what is in these foods that they all have that might help with breast cancer? So they found out it's this 3,3 dolomethane or DIM. That's what DIM, di and dolomethane, DIM, okay? So then the supplement companies were like, hey, we can extract this and concentrate it. So you have to eat a shit ton of crunchy vegetables in order to get what you get in the studies. So in the studies, they start studying this stuff, okay? And they put it in the lab rats and they check all kinds of things. And so they concentrate the shit out of it. It'd be like eating pounds and pounds and pounds of Brussels sprouts, okay? Um, you poop a lot, that's for sure. And so, um, so then what they found was DIM does not change your estrogen levels. Everyone keeps saying that. That is not what happens. It does not change your, the way your body produces estrogen, okay? It changes the estrogen metabolism pathway. 
say it again. It changes the estrogen metabolism pathway, the way estrogen is broken down in your body, the chemical pathway, it goes down to be broken off and cleaved and rendered, you know, inactive. On the way from estradiol to excretion, you go through two or three stages of breakdown. And there are a couple pathways that can go. DIM shunts estrogen metabolites into metabolites that are less likely to be associated with breast cancer. Okay? DIM shunts estrogen metabolism shunts the metabolism of estrogen into pathways less likely to be associated with breast cancer it does not decrease your estrogen levels i have read this a thousand times and it makes me want to scream and then they it's even in healthline and i'm like so i go to the article that healthline quotes it never says that in the article it's completely misinterpreted so the insurance so the supplement companies are making millions of all billions off of this dim saying it's going to lower your estrogen levels it's going to lower your estrogen levels it does not lower your estrogen levels it is, so the only people I recommend DIM for, the only people I say you should consider DIM or eat a shit ton of cruciferous vegetables are women with a history of breast cancer or a first degree family relative and they're super worried about it. I'm like, DIM might be helpful for you. Everybody else, no reason. It doesn't do anything for you. It does not lower your estrogen levels. People need to stop saying that. Okay, so, uh, but thank you for asking. Do keto gummies work? No, don't do anything with ketos in it. Don't. Um, DIM is diendolomethane. It's a very popular supplement that's being hawked and all these ridiculous promises. I saw this like, oh my God, this woman, she drives me crazy on TikTok. Um, she's a very compelling menopause story. And then she's trying to sell you. Now I sell stuff. So, you know, I'm an entrepreneur. I get it. But she literally is like a prostitute for, for these pellet people. And she starts talking about DIM. She's like, I don't sell DIM. She's holding up the bottle. But it helps with hair loss. No, it doesn't fucking do that. It helps with weight gain. It helps all this stuff. No, it does not do any of that. It may decrease your risk slightly for breast cancer development, okay, because of the shunted pathways. But that is all it does. Okay. Um, all right. Let's go to more questions. I'm getting off of DIM. I love ablation. I love ablation. It's not for everyone. But in the right candidate, a uterine ablation can be life-changing and without the risk of hysterectomy, okay? It is a way to denude the lining of your uterus so that where you make blood each month is rendered useless. And so your periods, if you have heavy, heavy periods when a normal-shaped uterine cavity, I mean, not everybody's a candidate, a uterine ablation can be a wonderful thing. I did them all the time. Um, okay. All right, so if you're just joining me, hi, I'm Dr. Mary Claire Haver. I am a board certified obstetrician gynecologist. I am a menopause specialist. I have additional 18 months of postgraduate training in medical nutrition, and I've married all my passions into my clinic, Mary Claire Wellness, outside of Houston, and my nutrition program for menopause weight gain called The Galveston Diet. All of my blogs, my information, my um, my have blogs that you can like, my blogs are amazing. So they're all up here. If you go to Dr. Mary Claire, the top of my TikTok page and you go to the link in bio, you can, um, get access to all that. Also, if you care or want to learn more about our nutrition program, we're having a 20% off sale. The code is menopause 20, all one word, and you can save 20% on any of our programs. So that's at the top of my website. You can find that there. Um, let me see. Uh, all right. So yeah. Um, also, are if you not sure if or if you are not sure if you're perimenopausal, I have a perimenopause quiz. It's validated from the Australasian Menopause Society. I borrowed it from them, and we give them credit. And it basically gives you, based on your symptom score, what is the chance that your symptoms are related to perimenopause. And then it asks for your email because it gives you all this information in the email that you can take to your doctor to discuss possible therapy. Okay, you, it allows you to make an informed decision and advocate for yourself, because I can't be everybody's doctor, at your doctor's office, okay? Um, all right, let's see. 
So, and you can find that at galvestondiet.com or there's a link at the top of my page. Oh my God, we're up to 100,000 likes. Thank you, everybody. Keep tapping. So, hi, and then follow me. Please, please, please follow me. I love talking about, I have tons of videos on women's health, gynecology, but mostly about menopause, menopause weight gain, menopause symptoms, how to treat, how to talk about HRT, how to ask your doctor for it, how, if you're a candidate, I have tons and tons of videos for you guys to go and play with. And, but I really would appreciate the follows, the likes, and the shares that helps drive the algorithm and keep this 54 year old mama relevant on this platform and we are almost to 1.9 million we're like this close and so i'm like basically doing a filibuster so we can get to 1.9 million so please follow me and share this video with the little share button with someone who you think might be um let's see uh all right are you menopausal all right so answer my little questionnaire down below are you menopausal yes or no that kind of helps me gauge this. All right. Um, are there any vertigo? Let's see. Um, let's see. Is it true that HR? Oh, we covered that one. All right. Um, is, how long should you take estradiol? Great question. So the health benefits are um, were on people who took it for a while. So the North American Menopause Society is saying, hey, the benefits are definitely outweighing the risks for most women without contraindications for 10 years of therapy um, or about till age 60. And then at that time, you can begin the discussion, how we doing, what's going on, do we have new risk factors, should we consider coming off at that point? It does not mean that you have to come off at 60 or after 10 years of therapy. It means we need to evaluate, do we have new risk factors, do we have new things that would not make you go? So if you're not sure if you are fully menopausal, go take the quiz and tell me what your score is. I'm dying, I'm dying, I'm dying to know. So the quiz is on my website. Um, at galvestondiet.com, or actually the best way to find it is here. If you go up to Dr. Mary Claire, go to the top of my TikTok page, click on the link in bio, and there's a big box at the top that says perimenopause quiz. Um, and 10 of you are taking the quiz right now. That's pretty cool. So estrogen and up, or do you need testosterone with it? Who wants me to talk about testosterone? Do y'all want me to talk about testosterone? Yes or no, yes or no, yes or no. Um, now, a lot of y'all, while we're saying yes or no, a lot of y'all are being told you can't take HRT and there's no reason you're being told that. Blood pressure is not a contraindication to taking hormone replacement therapy. Hypertension is not, okay? Um, your aunt having breast cancer is not a contraindication to you being able to be a candidate for hormone replacement therapy, okay? Um, uh, MTHFR is not a contraindication. Factor V Leiden is not a contraindication. Only if you've had a blood clot. Especially if you've been pregnant and you've not had a blood clot with these conditions, that is the highest your estrogen will ever, ever be. Any kind of hormone replacement therapy will be a microscopic dose compared to high, high your estrogen levels gotten pregnant. And if you didn't have a blood clot then, the chances that you get one on HRT are not that damn high. And transdermal does not carry the blood clot risk. It's oral. So don't do oral. Do transdermal. Guys, these people, people are fucking lazy and it's easier to not prescribe HRT and it make you feel crazy for asking it. And I'm just desperate to change the thought. We have left a generation of women bereft and miserable and hurting and feeling crazy and that no one cares and dismissed because we are not paying attention to them, to their symptoms. I tell you, there is a bias that I was taught in medical school in my training that if I couldn't figure it out, it was in her fucking head. It was her fault, not mine, okay? Everything we learned in medicine was how it was defined by a man's brain, okay? All of those lectures, all that teaching was all on a man's point of view, and we've got to stop this. You count, you matter. Your symptoms are real, and I believe you, and I'm fighting for you. Okay, enough about that. All right, um, will I be taking HRT after 60? I fucking will, yes. Uh, unless I have an absolute contraindication that Delel is in the next six years. Um, all right. Let's see. All right. Testosterone. Here we go. Who in this, in this room, you send me a heart, a love, or something, is over the age of 50? Let me know. Who's out there? Like, like, give me a bunch of likes if you're over 50. All right. Tap that screen. You just tap my face like 10 times. That's a like. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for the roses. Okay. Ladies, almost 100% of you, almost every single one of you 
If you had your testosterone checked, it is not going to be what the level was when you were 25. Therefore, it is low. Almost every single one of you will be on the low end of testosterone, okay? Especially the only people who have higher testosterone levels are polycystic ovarian syndrome sufferers. Okay, but actually that goes down with menopause. That goes away. Or if you have a tumor that is producing testosterone, okay? That's it. Everybody else is low. Everybody else our age is low. So do we supplement 100% of you with testosterone? Because very few of you will walk out of these pellet offices without testosterone, okay? Here's what the science says. Now, we need more studies. And here's what pisses me off about the pellet companies. They are a bill, BioT is a billion dollar business. And they are not dumping any of that money back. It's all going into their jets. And they're not dumping anything into research. Nothing into research on women's reproductive care, okay? And they're blanket recommending this shit for every single woman who has ovaries. Everybody's getting recommended testosterone. You're not walking out without it, okay, unless you have a tumor. And so, or you have active PCOS. And so, the studies have only shown that it can be helpful. Testosterone supplementation can be helpful for hypoactive sexual desire disorder. Nothing else. Nothing else. It's not been shown to increase your energy. It's not been consistently shown to increase your mood. I would love to see studies done on muscle mass. They're not spending the money on it. I would love to see studies done on testosterone versus placebo in a menopausal woman. Is it really helping with brain fog? Is it really helping with energy? Because it helps Sally feels better. She's also on estrogen and progesterone. You know, it's like you can't, they're making claims that are unfounded. And if you look at their paperwork, there's a little star at the bottom with a saying that claims not substantiated by the Food and Drug Administration, okay? You are off the reservation when you're taking this shit. What do I do know about testosterone? You might have acne. You might have more, it's an anabolic steroid. You will gain weight, okay? You will likely gain visceral fat. You will lose hair on your head if you're susceptible to it. So, but it may be helpful for hypoactive sexual desire disorder. That is who I recommend it to, and I use a cream because I can titrate the dose, and if the patient doesn't like it, it doesn't sit well with her, she's having side effects, we can stop it immediately, and she's not stuck with a pellet for three months. That is why I don't use pellets, okay? I have, I know people who use pellets, and I love them, and I think they're great, they're great clinicians, okay? But I know a lot of other people using pellets, and they have let the pellets become a cash cow for their office, and they are not, they're doing unnecessary testing and their patients are getting charged a shit ton of money for something that they could be a lot less expensive, okay? And the doctors are, are making their Mercedes payments. Okay, um, all right. Uh, almost no one needs DHEA. Don't take DHEA. There's no studies. I've, I've don't, gone down the rabbit hole. Do not take DHEA. There's no reason, okay? It's not helpful, it doesn't do anything, and I've looked at the studies, zero evidence. The only DHEA studies that showed maybe were people with breast cancer who were using topical DHEA on their genitals for vaginal atrophy. That was it, okay? All these claims about DHEA and no, 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 being a precursor, zip, zero, nothing. No studies to substantiate its use, save your money, you don't need it. Um, I don't take it. CoQ10, I need to do some research into that. You know, I'm researching for my menopause book, so that is something I'm gonna look more into for the brain health benefits, but really, the studies that I look at are women in perimen are women only, and in perimenopause and menopause. That's it. I don't look at 25-year-old athletes, I don't look at men, I don't give a shit about them, because they don't give a shit about me, and I'm just fighting for you guys. I'm only focusing on the studies done on women, and women my age, our age, okay? I'm looking for us. It's hard, there's not a lot, there's some. Okay, and so um, MCT oil, I wouldn't do it. No knees, I, I just, not that beneficial. Um, okay, so everybody take a second, double tap the screen. I just covered DIM, I cannot talk about it again. I just ripped a hole in the side of DIM. Save your money, don't take DIM, unless you've had breast cancer. That's, that's a person who should take it. Okay, um, I'm reading, I love your honesty and dedication to change women's health. I'm trying, I'm trying. Um, not, all, not all of the um, menopause OB gents on social media are that nice. I'm, I've, I've, um, some are kind of mean. 
and threatening. So I don't know. I don't know. Y'all be careful. There's a lot of shit out there. So yes, you can come and see me. I have a clinic in outside of Houston. I do not do uh, virtual visits. You have to come and physically see me. I have so many people who want to come see me. So um, on my link in bio. So thank you. We're at 126,000 likes. Keep tapping, keep tapping, keep tapping. Thank you so much. There's seven, there's 800 of you watching. This is very exciting. So if you're just joining, I know a lot of you coming in and out. Hi, my name is Mary Claire Haver. I am a, a board certified obstetrician gynecologist. I also have totally practice menopause care for my patients. I don't do babies anymore. I don't do regular surgeries. I just do menopause counseling care and develop um, toolkit plans for my patients. I also, in 2018, developed a nutrition program specifically for women in menopause. It's an anti-inflammatory nutrition program. You can go check it out. It's called the Galveston Diet and um, everything's 20% off. We're having a big sale right now, so go go check it out. Um, on my link in bio up here, so if you go on Dr. Mary Claire, you see my TikTok page at the top. I have our link to our nutritional supplements. So um, do you want to see what supplements I take? Do you care? Because I get that question a lot. I'll show you what I take. I don't sell all of them. I mean, I'm when I say sell, I made them for myself, and then I gave them to my patients, and then they wanted to buy it, and then we made it a company, and, and off we go. Thank you for the follows. Please follow me, share, and like this video with someone you think. Um, Oh, 200,000. Oh, we're going to get there. Okay, I will show you my supplements. Let's go. I feel like um, we're going to go to my little supplement cabinet. <laughs> uh, I have multiple jars of some of the things, so it's going to look a little crazy. So here's my cabinet right here. Okay, so I'll open it up, and here we go. Some of these are my kids. Uh, so I'm going to show you. I'll walk you through. I'll hold up everything I take. It's going to be backwards, so forgive me. But... Um, I'm going to put the phone on the toaster. Hopefully it doesn't explode. I can have a little bit higher. There we go. I know it looks so weird. So yeah, I had clinic today, which is why I'm in scrubs. Okay, here we go. So every day I mix these two. This is a fiber supplement. Okay, so why fiber? So in the West, traditional Western diet, how many of you track what you eat? I want to know. Let me see in, oh yeah, I have chi and I'll show you that too. Um, how many of you use a nutrition tracker and track what you eat and you know like how much calcium you're getting a day or magnesium or whatever? If you learn nothing else tonight from me, track your nutrition because it's going gonna, it's gonna to shock you and track your fiber intake. Only half of women in America are getting the recommended amounts of fiber. Who knows how much fiber you need a day? How many grams of fiber should you be eating minimum a day? Minimum. Who knows? Let me see. Oh, you're all right, Kimmy. You're tracking, you're tracking, fitness pal, good. I use chronometer, that's my favorite. Okay, who knows, who knows, who knows? Who knows how much fiber you need per day? 25, good, 25, 25, 25. So yeah, 25 minimum, I push for 35. So I probably get 25 with my food, with my nutrition, and then I use my supplement to push it to 35. So this is Galveston Diet Fiber. So what makes it different, it does have psyllium husk, which is the number one ingredient in most fiber products. We do have a lot of psyllium husk in here. But I also added um, buckwheat, millet, quinoa, amaranth, chia seeds. I wanted a mix of soluble and insoluble fiber. And so this is my fiber. I mix it with my collagen. This is from, we co-branded with a company called Sparkle. This is a brand of collagen called Verisol, V-E-R-I-S-O-L. Um, it's mixed with vitamin C and hyaluronic acid, and this one is lemonade flavor. And so I mix these two, and I drink it after I break my fast in the afternoon. And this has um, five grams of protein per scoop, so collagen is a protein, and it helps with wrinkles and cellulite and also osteoporosis prevention. So women who were osteoporotic and given the collagen supplement um, showed improvement in their bone density scores from just taking collagen, which is pretty amazing. So I consider, well, I wanna use it preventatively so I don't get osteoporosis. So um, I take these two together. These are on my website and the link to the supplements is in the bio. So I mix these two. Um, then the pills that I take, I take turmeric. So on my web, the pills that I take, I take turmeric. So on my web, the pills that I take, I take turmeric. So on my web, take turmeric. So on my web, so much data was coming out about possible benefits of turmeric 
uh, possible benefits of turmeric for menopausal women and perimenopausal women as far as inflammation, decreasing joint pain. So if you're having joint and muscle pain, this is something you might want to consider. We did combine it with piperine, the black pepper extract to increase the, um, it increases the uh, bioavailability of this. And there's some great studies, but go read the studies, decide for yourself if this is something you want to try. This is not something I recommend to everyone. If you're having muscle pain, if you're having joint pain, if you're having belly fat, if you're having brain fog, this can be helpful. Okay. Um, and then I take omega-3 and vitamin D combo. So those are the Galveston diet supplements. I only have four that I made. And so I'm lazy. I like to combine things like I did my fiber and collagen. So this is omega-3 and vitamin D mixed together. Um, and almost all of us are low in vitamin D, by the way. It's about 80% of my patients who come in. I check everybody's vitamin D level, and they are low. So if you want to learn how to get my, and I'll show you, I take others, and I'll show you those too. Mine are on my website. So you go up to Dr. Mary Claire to the top of my website, TikTok page. There's a link in bio. Click there, and you'll see the link for supplements, and you can go shopping and do whatever you want. So yay you. All right, I also take magnesium l ferronate. I'm probably going to develop this on my own actually talk to this company. This is who I buy life extensions and I might co-brand with them. So we're working on that. So I take this specific type of magnesium. Remember, there are multiple forms of magnesium out there. I'm not deficient. I get a lot enough magnesium. This is medicinal for me, not meaning I'm not correcting a deficiency. I'm taking extra to get a medicinal benefit. This particular kind, the, the magtine or the magnesium l has been shown to cross the blood-brain barrier better than the other forms, meaning it gets into the brain. It is great for sleep. It's great for depression, SSRI-resistant depression. My daughter, who takes ADHD meds at 22, has was grinding her teeth. It helped relax her jaw for teeth. So, you know, there are others, like probably glycinate is better to correct a deficiency. But if you're doing it for mental stuff, this would be your best bet. This is the one I recommend for that. Take a screenshot and then flip it. I'm going to hold it up for you guys. And I get it off of Amazon, but from this company. Okay, I don't make any money from them. I am in talks with them to co-brand, meaning I'll sell their brand on my website, but we're not doing it yet. So y'all are on your own for this. It's not the cheapest form of magnesium either. This bottle probably runs me about, I can get it on sale, but about 28 to 30 bucks a month, okay? Um, I do save my lives and I put them on um, YouTube when we're done. It takes about a week. I have a team that helps me. My team, my niece. <laughs> my niece is still in college. She's a senior in college. Uploads everything to YouTube <laughs> for me. Um, okay, I take resveratrol. So resveratrol is, I take it for longevity. So I read a book from Dave Sinclair, Dr. David Sinclair, um, who wrote a book on longevity called Lifespan, Why We Age and Why We Don't. And because of reading that book and all his science, I am now a fan of this. So I take resveratrol, and I also take NNM, nicotinamide. So I take these two for longevity, and they're both from fan of this. So I take resveratrol, and I also take NNM, nicotinamide. So I take these two for longevity, and they're both from Gene Formulas from Amazon. So the studies for resveratrol um, there's some pretty good menopausal studies, but the women were only on 75 milligrams twice a day. This shit is 1500 milligrams. So I'm like, I don't need all of that. I just need, so now I'm like taking one pill instead of two every other day. Cause that's a, that's a lot. I need to find a lower dose. And then the nicotinamide is specifically for longevity. You're not going to see any maximum benefits. I'm just doing it so I don't die. Um, and that's about it. I do have this. Occasionally, you know, I track my food intake. I will run low on B vitamins. I don't eat. I'm not a vegetarian, but I'm like, I just, you know, sometimes I'm low on my Bs and stuff. So this is a cheap and easy way for me to get just some extra vitamins on days that I didn't hit my nutritional goals. So, um, okay. I'm going to have to block this person because you are making some horrible, ugly ugly statements and you're gonna go bye-bye okay manage block bye bye asshole okay no we're not following you we're blocking you manage block confirm okay now that that nuisance is over okay uh thank you thank you thank you bye-bye yeah meanie you know what there's crazy people out there it's fine um not crazy but just rude so, um, what brand? Oh, okay. 
So it's um, gene formulations. Here, I'll hold it up. You can screenshot it and then flip it. Okay, I don't make any money off of this. Y'all can screenshot this. So B12, I do not, so I've had my B12 level checked a couple times and it was kind of okay. Wasn't great. And so I watch my intake and when it runs a little low, I will take a B complex vitamin, but I don't take it every day. Um, started your collagen and you love it. I'm so glad. So the resveratrol brand was the same one as the one I just hung up. Um, also, um, if you want to see kind of what our nutritional program is about. We have a free five-day meal plan you can go check out there. We also, if you're like, no, 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 I eat healthy. I hear this all day. I eat healthy, I eat clean, I eat great, I eat great. Go take my nutrition inflammation quiz. This is based off of, it's a registered dietitian quiz looking at food and inflammation. And it can blow your mind. Like you think you're eating healthy, but you got it, you got it. And it gives you a score. And so um, based on pro-inflammatory and anti-inflammatory choices. And so this, this absolutely can change your mind. The quiz is on there. If you think you're in perimenopause, that quiz is on there. If you want to make an appointment with me and come see me in Texas, that's on there. I also have a doctor referral list. This is a list of menopause-friendly providers that were crowdsourced from y'all. Okay, the whole reason I do all of this is for you. Okay, is all of you following me, liking, sharing? You know, I've got one point jillion followers now, and so y'all were like, I can't find a doctor. I can't find a doctor. I can't find a doctor. Help me find a doctor. Help me find a doctor. And I'm like, okay, well, tell me who, and, or I have a good doctor. So I compiled a list of menopause-friendly providers with testimonials from y'all. And all we did was verify their website, verify that they're still practicing. And it's in a spreadsheet. It's in a list <coughs> on my website. If you have a great menopause provider, please, I beg you, help a sister out in your community and write a testimonial. And then we will get it up on our website so that name can be shared with someone in your community looking for, um, oh my God, y'all, we are at 150,000 likes. We're going to get to 200. Um, just keep tapping the screen, keep tapping the screen, keep tapping the screen. And thank you for the follows. Um, what about topical estrogen along with an estradiol patch for frequent UTIs? Is that okay? Yes, 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 yes. The number, you can absolutely do vaginal or topical estrogen in the vagina and vulva as well as systemic estrogen, okay? I do it, I prescribe it all the time. The number one treatment for recurrent UTIs in a menopausal woman is vaginal estrogen, not antibiotics, not chronic antibiotics. Rex, I gotta get my dog, hang on. Hey, buddy. Come here, bud. Hey, bud. Rexy. Oh, he's on the couch. Never mind. He's okay. Hey, buddy. Did I wake you up? Come here. Hi, bubs. Hi. I know. I'm sorry. I thought you were outside. Okay. Sorry. Had to check on him. All right. Um, so if you miss part of the slide, we will have it uploaded to YouTube. Thank you, thank you, thank you for the likes, guys. You guys are amazing. So yes, you can use both topical and transdermal estrogen, no problem. There's no increased risk with topical estrogen. Um, mm, let's see. Vitamin D level is best. So I know the blood work says like 30, but the longevity experts think about 60 is kind of as low as you ever want to go. Remember, the blab that says 30 to like 200, that's a really wide range. And so I usually try to supplement my patients or talk to them about vitamin D rich foods. I want to get them up to 60 for a, um, for a good vitamin D level. And so that is based on the longevity experts. Um, oh... You're losing all your hair. Okay, I have a great YouTube video about hair loss. It goes through all the reasons why people lose hair, and it goes through different uh, treatment options. It's on my YouTube channel, which is the gal, Mary Claire Haver. So um, y'all can find me if you just Google me on, on YouTube, the hair loss video there. Um, DHEA supplement for cognitive issues, zero evidence that it works. Save your money, do something else. Um, does magnesium l help with blood pressure? I don't know. All I know is the benefits to depression, 
brain fog and sleep for that particular form of magnesium. And there may be some other forms of mag that might be helpful for blood pressure. Uh, black seed oil. You know, I was just looking at a study on that. Hold on. Let me see if it's still up. Oh, shit. Um, where is it? Oh, this was, uh, this was DIM. Uh, those are articles on DM because I was just, I'm writing a menopause book, so I was research. Oh, here it is. Okay. All right. So this is an article called Efficacy of the Complementary and Alternative Therapies for the Management of Psychological Symptoms of Menopause. So this was in the Journal of Menopausal Medicine. It was specifically looking at alternative therapies for the treatment of depression, anxiety in menopause. And so they looked at um, so you were asking about, um, yeah, keep the likes coming. So you were asking, so I'll just go through these with y'all. So, and these were specifically done on women. They looked at yoga, aromatherapy, phytoestrogens, a lot of Chinese medicine, black cohosh, uh, wild yam, uh, another Chinese med, maca, grapeseed. Okay, so you want a grapeseed oil. So grapeseed, which the active ingredient of grapeseed oil is proanthocyanidin. Proanthocyanidin is a polyphenol. Okay, so all of these are phytoestrogens contain polyphenols, which are chemicals that are found in plants that are antioxidants and anti-inflammatory components. Um, these people were given 100 milligrams a day and 200 milligrams a day doses for four weeks. Um, and it found that it did reduce their psychological symptoms, including anxiety and depression of 96 menopausal women in Japan. So these were done on Japanese women. Um, so I don't know if that's really applicable to, you know, Caucasian women or African women or Latinas. So, um, but these, you know, this is a step. Um, the pro and th the active ingredient grapeseed oil does not bind to estrogen receptors. Um, they think that its, its activity is more just of, as a really good antioxidant. And so a lot of people ask me about maca. So remember, these are studies done for anxiety and depression in menopausal women. So maca has been used for centuries to treat infertility and female hormone balance. Our systematic review identified two randomized control trials that investigated the effects of maca on the psychological symptoms in 94 women at various stages of menopause. Each of these trials form that MACA had a positive effect on menopausal symptoms. Significant reductions in depression and anxiety were observed after six weeks of treatment with different doses. Um, but the findings were limited because of small number of sample sizes and the lack of safety data. So they say more research is needed, but you know, drink your MACA, it might help. Um, what was the dosing on the resveratrol? So for menopause, the resveratrol, the positive benefits of menopause was only 75 milligrams twice a day, really low. And it's almost, it's almost hard to find it that low. Okay. Oh, you want black cohosh. Okay, sure. Um, they did look at black cohosh. Where to go? Where to go? Curcumin, St. John's Ward, eating primrose oil. We know even the primrose oil works for, yeah. So black cohosh, a previous systematic review of 16 randomized controlled trials that assessed the effects of oral black cohosh on somatic symptoms in 2,027 menopausal women found insufficient evidence to support the use of black cohosh for menopausal symptoms. They're saying don't do it. Um, sorry, does not seem to be worth. Thank you, my skin is amazing. Thank you so much. Uh, I will be coming out with more later. I'm testing a new product, but I'm under NDA. I cannot discuss it, so but more on that later. Um, okay. Lion's mane. They did not look at lion's mane in these studies. Sorry. Um, okay. Thank you for the likes. Thank you, thank you. 183,000 likes. We're going to get to 200, guys. Keep them coming, keep them coming. Wild yam. They did look at wild yam. Hang on, let's do that one. Uh, wild yam. Wild yam is a tonic nourishment that is high in ascorbic acid and protein. It is a tuber. It's a type of vegetable. It's really been used in Chinese medicine to treat a variety of symptoms, including menopausal symptoms. However, the evidence for effects of wild yam on menopause symptoms is limited. Significant improvement was seen in psychological symptoms of 50. That's a small study, only 50 women. Uh, following the use of 12 milligrams of wild yam twice a day for 12 months with no adverse events. Events, more research is needed. They are like, we can't blanket recommend it based on such a small study. Um, we need more studies. So that's what we got for Wild Yam. Um, wait, you nearly fell over. He must be stuck in the 1950s. Who, 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 who? Uh, let's see, your doctor says you only need a pap smear every three years now. Yes, that is standard. If you have no risk factors, if you're low risk, 
then you only need a pap every three years, but you should have a pelvic exam. Someone should look in the area to make sure you don't have vulvar cancer. Um, uh, primer and cream. For the vagina, I use estradiol cream. I don't like, I don't have a problem with Primarin as far as efficacy and safety. I think it, it'll work fine. I have a problem with the way they make Primarin. They get it from the pregnant, the urine of a pregnant horse. And what they do to the horses to get that urine and keep them pregnant is a little horrifying to me. And so I have a problem uh, ethically with how the Primarin is produced, so I do not prescribe it. I have great alternatives that are estradiol, that are bioidentical, that are safe and effective without having to torture a horse to get it. That's just my take, okay? Um, how much protein do I eat? I shoot for 80 to 100 grams of protein a day is my protein for my, that is my, my personal goal. That is, that is not for everyone. That's based on my height, my weight, my age, my needs, my sarcopenia, all of it. So, um, uh, loved your pellets, cannot afford. You can get great, safe, healthy, efficacious, beautiful, wonderful, delicious hormone replacement therapy without pellets. That is completely bioidentical and safe. The only thing that makes pellets different is the cost. Okay, and so you can have your healthcare provider write you a prescription for estradiol and go pick it up from the pharmacy and pay about $20 a month. Um, okay, that's so awesome. 88.74% of you guys are menopausal. Yay, welcome. I love, I love these, these, okay. Uh, so yeah, call that healthcare provider who made you take pellets and ask them to prescribe you something you can afford. And if they refuse, find a new doctor. You don't have to pay the premium for good quality efficacious hormone replacement therapy. Um, menopause lasts forever. Once you're menopausal, you're menopausal forever. Your symptoms may wax and wane. Your very obvious symptoms may go away completely, but your health risks will remain with you for the rest of your life. Hormone replacement therapy can attenuate some of those risks, but if you're not doing nutrition, exercise, mindfulness, if you're not covering all your bases, if you don't use the full menopause toolkit, you're doing yourself a disservice. Um, joint pain, I'm about to start researching joint pain as a chapter in the book, musculoskeletal pain and menopause, so hold please. Turmeric can be helpful. I definitely recommend, there's some great data on turmeric. You can go to my blog at galvestondiet.com or the link is here. The top of the mirror. Oh my God, we're almost at 200,000 likes. Keep those likes coming. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And follow me if you don't follow me. If you don't know me, I'm Dr. Mary Claire Haver. I'm a board certified ob -GYN. I'm a menopause specialist. I also have 18 months additional training in medical nutrition. So I've married all of those passions into my wellness program for menopausal women, the Galveston Diet. Um, also in my clinic, Mary Claire Wellness, outside of Houston, you can come and see me. However, I don't think we have a visit open until April. <laughs> Um, just found you. So I would love, love, love. Uh, we hit 200,000 likes. Woo! Thank you guys. This is so fun. I've been talking my head off. We have 355 new followers. Welcome all of you. That's so amazing. You guys are helping me get to my goal of my big goal is 2 million. So we're like almost at 1.9. We're so close. We're so close. So boom, boom, boom. Chia seeds for weight loss, fiber. Okay, so I held up my fiber supplement. And if you wanna know what supplements that I recommend and take, go to sup my supplement link here at Galveston Diet. I, I created them for myself and then I was making them for my patients and then I they told me to make it a company and we did. Now we have a supplement company. But, um, but fiber, so fiber does a lot of stuff. Fiber keeps you full longer. Fiber feeds your gut microbiome. That is the food. That is the prebiotics. When people are like, prebiotic, prebiotic, it's just fiber. Girl, go eat an avocado. You'll be fine, okay? You don't need to be taking all these prebiotics, okay? I supplement fiber because I want to get to 35 grams per day. I push to the upper limit because of my family history, because of the health benefits, because of all the good things it does for me. Uh, and so estradiol cream, um, and it lowers your blood sugar. It lowers your insulin levels. It it does. It, it talks to your insulin. You know your leptin and ghrelin. It does so many things. Probiotic, I recommend. Um, so I take one from Garden of Life. Do y'all want to see it? That's the one I forgot to show y'all. All right, I take one from Garden of Life. Um, I'm kind of shopping for a new one. Um, it's the 85 billion. So when you're looking for a probiotic, billions is better. You want billions. You want one that has a lot of variety. Of species in it. Y'all can take a picture of this guy and screenshot it. I'll hold it. Screenshot this and then flip it. It's the Garden of Life Women's Raw 
85 billion. That's what I take, okay? I don't sell it um, because if you eat something rich in probiotics every day, you probably don't need this. So the majority of your, your nutrition should come from food, not supplements, okay? Supplements are just supplementing a gap or some of them can be a bit medicinal like the, the, ma the magnesium that I take. Um, okay, so... Guard of Life was bought out by Nestle. I heard that. That's kind of why I'm shopping for a new one. Um, but I haven't found one yet that I like. Um, oh, vitamin D, omega, and magnesium weren't on your free tracker. How do you find these? So my favorite tracker is called Chronometer, C-R-O-N-O-M-E-T-E-R, -E Chronometer, C-R-O-N-O-M-E-T-E-R, -E and they have a fully stacked. So the reason why I found it, my daughter was going to be a registered dietitian. So in order to do that, you have to go to college for four years and get a nutrition science degree. And then you get a master's degree, like in the hospital nutrition clinical setting. And then you have to, you know, with your master's, you have to pass their test and then boom, you're a registered dietitian. So she decided in the middle of her nutrition sciences that she really wanted to go to medical school. So she's finishing her nutrition science degree and then she's applying, she's applying to med school right now. Like her applications are in, she's already got interviews, you know, she, this is her path. So she's skipping the RD part. Um, she doesn't really wanna be a registered dietitian, she just wants to go to med school um, with her background. So anyway, long story, she's the one who told me about this database. And mom, this is the one we use, my professors recommend it, it's the best. So that's why I started using Chronometer. It's not for keto, it's not for calorie counting, you can do that with it. But it really was developed to have a, a you know, really easy to use, great um, thumbnail. That, I think a link is on my website somewhere, but you can just Google it, Chronometer. Um, I love it. So that's how I check my nutrition. Um, what helps constipation and menopause? Fiber, exercise, and water. Um, fiber, exercise, and water. Um, please read, you're not stuck in 50s. A doctor, me. Some women are just frigid. Who fucking said that to you? Oh my God. Ew, gross. You should have slapped that son of a bitch in the face and got off the exam table and left. Oh my God, that guy should be, you should have called the state board and turned his ass in. I know a man said that. Uh, sorry. Who would say that to a woman? Oh my God, gross. That's disgusting. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, what a motherfucker. I mean, I, okay. If someone says something like that to you, I'll tell you what to do. You're going to make their life a living hell. You pick up the phone and you call the state board and you file a formal complaint and you will fuck that person's life up. That has happened to me with a crazy husband. And you have to like get a lawyer. You have to file all this paperwork. You have to pull all the charts. Like if you, if someone does some shit like that to you, or you can file a complaint with the state board and literally it will make their life a living hell. Living hell. Trust me, um, but it's true. Okay, thank you for the, the gifts and the stuff, guys. Y'all make me laugh. Okay, Vince the Vampire, that's so cute. All right, that's just gross. That's just gross. Can, can I imagine like telling, oh, you're just frigid. <sighs> okay, yes, I have an Instagram account. It is the Galveston Diet. Um, Instagram is the Galveston Diet. The link is, I think, at the top of my TikTok page, too. I have a couple hundred thousand, no, a hundred and, I don't know, like 150 maybe on Insta. I'll tell you in a second. Uh, it doesn't matter how many, but, you know, I have a huge engagement on my, on my reels there, huge. Bigger than TikTok now, but I don't know. I, I, I can't. I don't know why. It's like amazes me every day. All right, guys. I am actually going to jump off and go on to Instagram and do a quick live. So this was fun. We had so much fun. Give me as many taps as your finger can stand on your way out. Please follow me. I also have a YouTube and Facebook. Facebook, um, not super active anymore. Facebook has gone a little crazy. But YouTube is where my longer videos are, much longer videos. So um, thank you, thank you, thank you for all the likes, all the shares, all the follows, all the support. I am here because of you. And um, so glad I could talk to you guys tonight. 
And um, check out my website at galvestondiet.com with all of our free blogs and information. We have tons up here at the link in bio. And if you are, if you feel like you want to jump into our nutrition program, it is 20% off. Use the code MENOPAUSE20, all caps, MENOPAUSE20. Um, and the good thing about our nutrition program is it's all over the world. You don't have to be in the U.S. to buy it. Um, it's all digital, it's all online, and everything we have is downloadable and printable. So anywhere, we have students all over the world um, and counting. And so we love you, and I will come on again soon. Take care.